Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to commend Senator Fasano for bringing the bill proposal before us, uh, but very much would like to uh, commend and salute uh, Co-Chairman Winfield of the Judiciary Committee for really uh, grabbing the bull by the horns regarding this, uh, setting up certain meetings uh, where all the stakeholders were gathered. Uh, those were very interesting meetings. Uh, people had to put all their cards on the table, offer different ideas. Uh, no was really not an option during those meetings. It was, we have this issue, how can we get there? Uh, and we heard input from the state's attorney's office, from the public defenders, from people that were experts in the field. Uh, ultimately, there was buy-in from individuals, uh, both in the House and the Senate. Uh, as uh, Senator uh, said, indicated, uh, Representative Walker, uh, very much uh, involved in juvenile justice policy and oversight committee as the co-chair with the secretary of OPM, but has been involved in this for years and years and years. Uh, and we've known for a while that there's been problems in particular with car theft and, and juveniles. And typically the response has been, well, they should be kicked up to adult court. And the pushback would be, their brains haven't developed, we're not really sure why this is occurring, and it's not good public policy to just automatically kick a juvenile into the adult court system uh, regarding a particular set of crimes uh, when we're trying to drive the entire uh, direction in a different way and break that cycle of recidivism and try to stop these young people from getting involved in the criminal justice system in the first place. So the salutary parts of this bill are many, uh, but first off, it would be up to the juvenile or their representative to make application. And this is in the nature of uh, an uh, uh, accelerated rehabilitation or any one of the other diversionary programs we have. And so typically these juveniles would have a public defender uh, who would be in close contact with their client, and it's the public defender and or the juvenile that needs to make application for this particular program. The court can't do it of their own volition, the state's attorney can't do it of their own volition, uh, but the notion is that the juvenile would have to be willing to embrace all these services that would be made available. It's almost like wraparound services for the young person and they would be on probation for essentially six months, and if they needed further addressing, that could be extended by the court for an additional six months. The idea is simply to nip these incidents in the bud and try to turn these young people's lives around as soon as possible so that they never really enter into the criminal justice system. And that comports with the entire direction that our state has been going. Quite often I've been asked and I've gone to uh, various seminars, Washington, D.C., uh, Nevada, uh, Denver, Colorado, not Nevada, Denver, Colorado, uh, Philadelphia, and it's, you know, why is a conservative Republican want to rehabilitate criminals? And I, I, I want to break the cycle of recidivism. I don't want juveniles to go into the criminal court system. I want law-abiding, productive, tax-paying citizens. I, you know, seven correctional facilities, they don't all have to be packed. I'm down to six now, I'd love to keep whittling that down. It would be great if we had no prisoners, but we have to break that cycle of recidivism and if we can stop the first crime from occurring or after the first crime, make sure no further ones occur, that's fantastic. At the public hearing, Senator Fasano was quite eloquent in bringing forward his ideas and one of the things that he stressed is he wanted data collection. And we weren't able to do it in the Judiciary Committee, but th this amendment which becomes the bill does do that. And I want to thank the representatives of the judicial branch for reaching out to us, embracing this notion, and saying we can collect this data. Because there's a couple of things that I've learned through this process just this year. The incidence of juvenile stealing automobiles, and this covers both larceny one and two, so it doesn't matter if it's a $60,000 BMW or a $500 clunker, automobile theft is automobile theft, and if it's your car, you need it for transportation, and this is addresses all this. But what we will also be doing on an annualized basis is gathering data so that we can figure out why is this 
crime tends to be geographical in nature. It tends to be disproportionately higher in the greater Waterbury area. You go to a different part of the state, it's not as uh, high. And it's not necessarily because it's rural, suburban, or urban, but certain urban areas are just have this more endemic to them than others. Why is that? I don't know. Is this simply joyriding? Is it some sort of like uh, way to get into a gang? Is it just boredom? Uh, we need to get to the bottom of all this because we can't figure out a solution until we have deep knowledge of what the actual problems are. And so we'll be gathering up that data. Unfortunately, this won't go into effect till October uh, to get the judicial branch ramped up to be able to address this and then the uh, annualized data collection won't be ready until the following October. So we won't have it for the next legislative session, unfortunately. But we might have some preliminary data on the first several months uh, before next February and hopefully we can maybe glean some information from that. So we're trying to drill down deep and take a thoughtful, methodical approach to this issue of automobile theft by juveniles and other serious crimes that would fit into these categories. And again, I want to commend Senator Fasano for bringing this before us and really championing this. Members of, of both caucuses, uh, Chairman Winfield, uh, uh, Chairman Staffstrom, my good friend and ranking member, Representative Rosa Rabimbis, uh, and uh, to my knowledge, Representative Staffstrom and Rabimbis are sleeping right now after the 14-hour marathon that they just went through. Plus, because that just started at 10 o'clock. They were there even earlier than that. Uh, but again, Representative Walker in the House, Representative Porter, other interested parties, public defenders, state's attorneys, judicial branch, uh, pretty much anybody and everybody uh, that's involved with JJPOC that have an interest in trying to see us get our arms around this in a thoughtful way. And I would urge my colleagues to support this amendment which becomes the bill. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Keith.